Welcome to Aunt Kalina's reading of The Puka Pages, written and illustrated by Laura Craig Gaddis. This Sabbath is about Imbolc. February 2nd. Other names for Imbolc are Candlemas, Imbolc, Feast of Torches, Oval, Bridget's Day, Lupercalia, Groundhog Day, Feast of Waxing Light. Imbolc means in the belly. Even though it's still winter, spring is coming soon, and all over the world, new life is already growing in the bellies of mother animals. Deep within the belly of Mother Nature, below the snow and frozen earth, new life is stirring there also. Okay, snuggle in and let's go to the storybook chair for a story with Elsie and Puka. Oat Cakes It was Imbolc Eve. With a shiver and magical anticipation, Puka trailed after his witch as she lit a candle in the window of their cottage and then opened the front door and placed an oat cake on the step outside. Now don't eat it, she teased him. The cat looked up at her with wide-eyed astonishment. I would never, he said indignantly. That's for the goddess. Elsie grinned down at him fondly as she closed the door. You did once, remember? <laughs> no. Well, it was your first in bulk, and you were still just a baby kitten. Smiling at the memory, Elsie went into the parlor. She sat down in her wingback chair by the warm fire on the hearth. The cat leaped up into her lap. He circled a few times and then settled in a neat, compact ball of black fur. Okay, he said. Tell me what happened. And so she did. Tiny Puka had been chasing his witch's boots around the cottage all day. It was exhausting. What are you doing now? He asked. Making candles, Elsie said. Why? Don't we have enough? Not enough to last the year, she answered. And today is in bulk eve, the traditional time to make candles. Why? Because it's the halfway mark between the winter solstice and the spring equinox. In bulk is sacred to the goddess of the growing light. The candles made today and left out will be blessed by her as she passes our cottage tonight. I guess that's pretty nice of her to bless them and all that. But it still seems like a lot of work. The kitten climbed up onto the rocking chair in the kitchen and took a nap. He woke a while later to the wonderful smells. Mm. Supper? He asked eagerly as he jumped out of the rocking chair. Elsie laughed as she filled his bowl. After supper, Puka watched as his witch tried to perform a brief ritual in front of the hearth in the parlor. Being a kitten, however, he was full of questions. What's it book about? It's celebrating the growing light and life during the coldest part of the year. It's when the goddess's belly is growing the new life that will be born in the spring. <gasps> Where's the goddess's belly? I want to see. Elsie laughed. <laughs> Just look outside. Her belly is the earth. All the baby seeds sprouting roots beneath the soil and all the new life that will be born in the spring. Puka glanced out the window, but it was dark and he didn't see anything. He looked over his shoulder at her skeptically. The girl added, Imbolc is also a quiet time of stillness, waiting, and faith. Faith that the light is growing, that the days will be warm, and that, even if we can't see it, new life is about to be born. The kitten struggled to understand. Mm, it's sort of like when I'm hungry, but it's all right, because I know you're going to be making supper soon. <coughs> His witch nodded. Yes, it's a lot like that. Now, may I get on with my ritual? Okay. 
Puka sat, curled his stubby little tail around his body, and prepared himself to watch and learn. Afterward, his witch lit a candle in the window. What's that for? he asked. To guide the goddess to our home, she told him. Then she opened the door and left an oat cake on the doorstep. And this is for, asked the kitten. An offering, she said, is to thank the goddess for the grain she provided during the past year and for good luck and prosperity in the year ahead. She's going to eat that? asked little Puka. Elsie grinned. I guarantee it'll be gone in the morning. And now, time for bed. She picked the kitten up, blew out the lamps, and carried him up the stairs. Several hours later, Puka woke. His little tummy was making rude noises, and he realized he was hungry again. He rose from the pillow and hopped off the bed. The stairs were a challenge. He jumped down them, one at a time, then scampered to the kitchen to check his food bowl by the hearth. <sighs> it was empty. Then he remembered the yummy oat cake that had been left on the front doorstep. He ran to the front door and pawed at it, but the door was firmly shut. What to do? Hmm. Wait! There was a parlor window that Elsie always left cracked open to let a bit of fresh air in. Puka galloped into the parlor that was still faintly lit by the glowing embers of the fire. There was the window! He climbed onto the witch's desk, jumped to the sill, and then squeezed through the crack. His leap from the window was cushioned by the bank of the soft snow beneath it. He paddled his way through the snow toward the cottage steps and the oat cake. Then he proceeded to chow down. <laughs> his tummy full, Puka was ready to return to Elsie in their warm, comfy quilts. He followed the little furrowed path he'd made through the snow back toward the window. But when he tried to jump up onto the ledge, it was too high. And it kept getting higher, because every time he tried, he just kept sinking deeper into the snow when he landed. By now, the kitten was very cold, wet, and shivering violently. He paddled his way through the snow, back to the door, and huddled against it, his little teeth chattering. He grew sleepy and wondered if he was having a dream, because suddenly a beautiful lady appeared. Her long hair streamed out like the red-gold rays of the sun, and she wore a white and red gown. Her pale face was sweet, yet looked stern. You ate my offering. The kitten blinked up at her. The cold seemed to be creeping into his very bones, making it hard to keep his eyes open. I was hungry, but I know it was naughty of me. It wasn't mine to take. I'm sorry. The lady smiled. I am the goddess of all young life, including yours, little kitten. Eat my grains, grow, and be strong. And then... The rosy golden light around her head got even stronger and so bright that he couldn't see her face anymore. Suddenly, the cottage door opened. Puka, who'd been leaning against it, tumbled backward into the warm cottage. There you are, exclaimed Elsie. She scooped him up into her arms. Elsie, the goddess was here. She said I could eat her oh cakes. Are there any more? Asked Puka hopefully between chattering teeth. We'll have oat cakes for breakfast in the morning. Right now, I think what you need is nice hot milk with ginger and some warm quilts by the fire, said the witch tenderly. Come on, you silly little cat. The kitten burrowed deeply in her arms, and for once, he didn't argue. In this 
issue of Puka Pages. There are coloring pages. In the kitchen, Elsie shares her oat cakes recipe. In the little garden, you learn all about ginger, which Elsie used with Puka. There is a letter from Scotland by Fiona. In the little book of shadows, they teach you a little bit of candle divination. In Learn with Puka, you learn about the Sabbath cards that will be from in bulk 2021 through Yule 2021, where you'll be coloring Sabbath cards to place on your altar. Teaches you the magic colors and symbols and that kind of thing. By Mama Witch Carmen. In Witchcrafts, you learn how to make your own bed for the goddess. And then there's a Wee Witchling read along. Don't forget, it's free. Just have your parents help you when you go to the site.